another video. Today we are doing my monthly reset video and for the first time I think I'm gonna try to have this video up on the first of the month for once. So basically what I'm gonna go through is all my goals for July and see how I did on reaching my goals and then also show you guys my monthly budget. And I'll go through how I budgeted for July, how I did, and then show you my budget for August. Starting off with my goals, what I decided to do this year was create all of my main goals in, jo in January and then break them down into smaller goals each month so that I have more of an incentive to reach my goals every month. And it's been working very, very well so far, and I've enjoyed how this process has been going. So I will continue to do my goals like this, but I did break them down into four main categories. So there's finance, personal goals, health goals, and content creation goals. Starting off, we'll go through my finance goals. I wanted to save $1,800 into our house fund, and I did only save $1,600, which I mean only I'm still very proud of that number. I feel like it was, it is a lot more than what we normally would. And the only reason I knew it was going to be a little bit higher was because I got one of my bonus checks this month. So that does inc incorporate the money from that that I put in there. I just decided, I think when I originally made that number, I was going to put less towards my debt and more towards that. I ended up changing my mind because I want to pay off my credit card debt as fast as I can. So, and then the next goal was to pay $400 towards my car, which I did. Again, my car payment is only $332, but every single month I put more towards the principal because I want to pay that off faster than the length of the loan so that I pay less interest. So that's what I've been kind of doing so far while I'm still trying to pay off some of my other debt. Eventually I will increase that even more, but I basically kind of just been pretending that my car payment is $400, but I break it up into the payment and then the principal. That's been going great for me. And then the next goal was to put $1,450 towards my credit card debt and I actually ended up putting $2,250 towards my credit card debt so that felt amazing and that was because I did end up using some of the money from my bonus towards paying off my credit card debt so those are my finance goals I think I did pretty good overall moving on to my personal goals I always want I want to read more this year so I made it a goal to read two books pretty much every single month and this month I read She's Not Sorry by Mary Kubica and Just for the Summer by Abby Yemenez both of those books were very very good She's Not Sorry I think I I wanted to like that one a little more only because I loved her book Local Woman Missing but I don't know, something about the plot of She's Not Sorry confused me a little bit, so that one wasn't like a top read of mine, but it was still very good. I do love a thriller. And then my other book, Just for the Summer. Oh my god, this book is so good. I would recommend this book to literally anybody. It is so good. I mean, obviously you have to kind of like romance, but I just had to talk about that book because it was a 10 out of 10 read amazing there's a reason it's going viral all over the place because it is so good my next goal is date night we always want to do a date night every single month and we actually we went golfing and then we did a movie date which was really fun we went to go see the new deadpool movie and that was really good and we haven't been to the movies in literally forever so that was kind of fun it was a nice different thing for us to do and the next goal was i wanted to go through and sell some of my old clothes <sighs> I didn't totally meet this goal because the the intent behind this was to list all of the new clothes that I want to sell on Poshmark and I did not do that yet but I did end up selling like an old pair of scrub pants so I did make money from selling clothes but I didn't list any of my new clothes that I wanted to sell so I'm not counting that goal as met and then the next thing was selling our wedding thing so i went through i think like two weekends after we had the wedding i went through everything and listed everything on facebook marketplace because i just want a lot of it gone and also oh 
that's why now it all makes sense that is also why i was able to put more towards my debt than i thought because any money that i got back from selling these things went towards my credit card so that is also where that money came from that makes way more sense so i did end up selling stuff and made 345 dollars. so that was super exciting um also just exciting to get rid of stuff like get it out of my space you know what i mean i hate clutter and a lot of it I was able to sell for pretty close to what I even paid for it, so it ended up working out. Next one was that I wanted to go golfing twice, and we did reach that goal. Technically, but when I'm filming this, I haven't reached that goal, but it is the 27th right now. So I am filming this a little bit early, but I can only really film my videos on the weekends, and then by the time I try to edit it and get it posted on the 1st, um that's kind of how i have to do this but anyway so we are going golfing tomorrow which is sunday the 28th so i will have golfed twice this month then we'll move on to my health goals i always have a goal to i've been trying to lose weight like just in general be healthier feel better whatever so usually i try to set a goal to lose two pounds every single month and I mean, this month I was close there. Again, there's still time. When we got back from the honeymoon, the scale had gone up, you know? It just, as it does after a vacation. So we are working on getting that back down to a normal number, a, a more average number for myself. So we did lose a little weight, um, but still higher than like where I even started the year at. So we're not overall not doing great, but I try not to stress too much on this because I have had issues in the past with my relationship with food so I just try to make better choices overall and yeah get my body moving a little more so that's where we're at with that goal and then the next one was to cook one new meal and I actually ended up cooking like three so we did I did this like summer salad thing that had like cucumbers feta cheese tomatoes like all that kind of stuff mixed together which was new for me corn it was very good and then the other one was chicken caesar pasta salad and that was so good i really liked that i thought it was gonna be weird having like pasta with caesar dressing but no it was amazing and then we did barbecue chicken flatbreads and that was so good so i'm happy with all of the meals that we made definitely some nice new things to add to our rotation that's really why i like doing it i just like to not have the same thing every single week so that was that was good and then the other one was to only have two days of drinking alcohol and i'm pretty sure it's gonna end up being six again because we're going out to dinner tonight and usually i like to have like a drink at dinner so i do think that is gonna end up being six it's just tough it's tough in the summer and again, this, I always like to preface this by saying this isn't because of like any kind of struggle or issue I have with alcohol. It's more just, I don't, I feel better when I'm not drinking. So I try not to. It is summer. We like to go out, have fun with our friends, have a drink with our friends, get dinner. It just happens. It's not like, I don't know. It's not like I'm going crazy. I just more feel like typically when I drink, I eat worse, I feel worse, I stay up later than I normally would. Just overall, my body doesn't like it. But, you know, if I'm having one or two drinks at dinner, it's not like I'm going crazy. Basically, I just like to limit how much I'm drinking because I know myself, I know my body, and I just want to feel better. So I try to limit that. But finally, moving on to my content creation goals. These are the most fun for me because I enjoy them a lot. And they're at the moment because I'm really trying to grow on social media. These are the most like motivating for me. So the first goal was to make $700 from social media. And this can be through any kind of revenue source. And again, the reason I chose these numbers is because I wanted to make, increase my goal every single month. So like January was 100 February was 200 and so on. So we're on July. So I set my goal to $700. As of right now, I'm at just over 
$400, so still pretty good. I'm not upset with that number. It's definitely an increase since last the last couple months I haven't been making that much money. That consists of like $363 as of right now from the creator fund on TikTok. I do still have a few days to for that to increase a little bit and then about $42 from the TikTok shop affiliate links or whatever. So that money is funny because like I posted one video promoting something on TikTok shop and I get I still get commission from that one video for months now. So it does go to show that you can make money from promoting items on TikTok shop, which I think is a good source of income if you're looking to do that. I just don't think like as someone who wants to be like a true content creator, I don't think that is the avenue that people should be going down unless i mean unless you just want to be making money like sure but i think there's a difference between people who want to be like a true content creator and people who want to be on there to make money fast because the only way you're truly going to be like a real content creator is if you're going on being authentic showing products you really like showing products that you aren't even getting paid for to show and promote being real and being honest Whereas if you're promoting these like kind of cheap TikTok shop products, it may not work out for you in the long run, but I do think there's a lot of money to be made on there. My next goal was to post at least five times a week on TikTok. And this was something I really, really wanted to do this month because I had been really struggling with my motivation and creativity on TikTok. And I was able to do this. And I do think that kind of directly relates to why I was able to make so much more money this month. Like last month, I swear I made only like $80 from talk like in general. So I do think it just goes to show that like the more you show up, the more consistent you are, the better overall you'll do. But it is hard and you, you're allowed to take breaks like you really are. But just know that like it's okay to take a break. But when you come back have a plan, be ready, and good things will good things will come to those who keep going and be persistent. Then the next goal was to post five YouTube videos and I think by the time this is posted, I will have posted seven videos in the month of July, which is crazy. I never thought that I would be posting this many videos on YouTube at all. But I've really, really been enjoying YouTube. I've been enjoying watching other people's YouTube videos. So I think that inspires me to want to make my own and like find ways to make mine better. Every single time I post a video, I try to make it better. I try to edit it a little bit better, figure out what's working for me, what's not working for me. So that has been really fun. And again, I think that kind of directly relates to my next goal, which was to hit a thousand YouTube subscribers. And at the moment, I'm at 1,053, which is crazy. So I've reached that first, like, past 1,000. And I feel like the reason that is important is because there's two criteria for getting monetized on YouTube. And one is hitting 1,000 subscribers. And then the other is getting 4,000 watch hours, which is very hard. I'm not going to lie. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not even halfway to 4,000 watch hours. So... We're working on it, I'm trying. That's another reason why I'm trying to create as many videos as I can because I just wanna get those watch hours up and have content out there for people to watch. But that was an exciting kind of milestone for me to reach. I was super excited to surpass that goal. I started out the month at 850 and like I said, I'm now over I gained over 200 subscribers in the month of July. So welcome if you're one of those subscribers. And my last goal was to hit 75,000 on TikTok. Again, I've been sort of, I, ha I did have a better month than the past like three or four months, but I didn't hit this goal. I stayed at exactly 72,000, which is not bad. I think again, the more consistent I can be, the better and you know if you have a viral video that helps but it doesn't always just happen you know every video is not going to be a viral video you do have to work you have to have like kind of a strategic plan and figure out like 
sometimes I know that certain things I say might cause like rage bait so people watch the video because I said something that like gets people upset so it's it's tough to manage like okay what kind of content creator do I want to be do I want to be someone who just gets does crazy videos for views or do I want to be someone who is authentic and real or like throw in a couple things that make people upset like I some of the stuff I'm just it's actually me truly being honest and like people still get upset with what I say so I'm like there's no winning but anyway long story short I stay at the same amount of followers on TikTok which totally fine it is what it is we just keep again it's it's hard not to get discouraged sometimes but the true the people who really truly make it are the ones who are consistent and show up even when nobody's watching so do with that what you will quickly i will just go through my goals for august that i've set and again these might change just slightly by the time that i post this or you know, by the time the end of the month the end of august comes but as of right now my finance goals for august are to save 200 dollars towards our house fund 200 dollars towards my emergency fund pay $400 towards my car, and then $1,700 towards my credit card debt. My personal goals, again, is to read two books. I just started, I just started this book, The Girl on the Train. I forgot that I've actually seen the movie for this, but it was a while ago, so I'm not sure. I like vaguely remember the plot. The agenda for the month is The Girl on the Train, and then I also want to read Beach Read by Emily Henry because I love her and I love her books so I'm excited to read both of these um, and then the next one is to do a date night of course we just love doing a date night health goals I want to lose two pounds cook one new meal and then try to only do three days of alcohol in the month of August lastly content goals I want to make $800 through social media whatever that looks like brand deals creator fund, whatever, post five times a week on TikTok, post five YouTube videos, hit 1300 YouTube subscribers. So again, that would be roughly 250 new subscribers. And then I wanna reach 1700 watch hours. I think I'm sitting at roughly 1400 watch hours right now. So I don't know if this is gonna be kind of a reach goal or am I gonna blow past it? Nobody really knows. So this, I feel like this is like a good kind of in the middle also to see, kind of gauge how how many hours I get every single month to, so hopefully I can figure out when I might reach the goal of getting monetized. So I think that will be an interesting goal for me this month. Lastly, I'm gonna keep my follower count on TikTok. My goal for followers on TikTok the same and try to hit 75,000 this month. So those are my goals for the month of August. Next little section of this monthly reset is going to be my budget, my monthly budget. So we'll take a look at July and then kind of go through some of the budget for August as well. So let's take a look at my spreadsheet and go through my budget. I use a template by Coplenty. I will link it down below if you'd like to purchase. I feel like it's a very good comprehensive budget template. So if you are looking for one, this is a very good one. I honestly, this is the first month that I've kind of been using it fully and like all the, all the features that it has. So bear with me. I feel like it's interesting because if you look up here, I'm technically in the red this month, but I think it's because like, again, this is the first month that I'm using it and like it took out the rent from this month, but technically the rent is saved from my last two paychecks, if that makes sense. So like, I don't know, it's hard to tell. Like, I don't think I'm in the red because I haven't overspent than what I had. So. I'm still working out the kinks to this, but this first section is my income here. As we can see, I have my paychecks, what I made from TikTok, my, what I made from Facebook Marketplace, TikTok Shop, and Poshmark. So I had a bunch of different sources of income. And then obviously this first paycheck is a little bit higher because that is including my bonus that I got. 
So my overall total income was almost $7,000, which is really cool. That's kind of how I was able to allocate money differently than I normally would. Um, and then if we take a look here in my savings, this is like what I wanted to budget and this is what I actually budgeted. So the only reason this number is in the negative, again, it's kind of funny because I'm, I'm trying to figure this out and playing around with it. And like I, I watched another video of someone who I had to use money from my emergency fund. So that's why that's in the negative. But then I also put, I did put 200 into my emergency fund. So it's kind of, it's a little complicated, but that is why that number looks like that. And then I was able to put $14.50 towards the house fund and $100 into my Roth IRA. So that's my savings. And then as far as like bills, this should be relatively the same every single month. I did decrease my subscriptions for next month just because I canceled a few. So this number will be lower, but it's nice to see like this number here at the bottom being like those are my fixed expenses every month overall did pretty good the only thing that was a little bit higher was i totally forgot i had signed up to do this one-on-one -on -one coaching with a girl online so that was 300 dollars, and i did have to do three months of that so that was the last last month of paying for that but i will not be paying for that anymore and then the car payment was higher but that's just because i put extra towards it so that's why that number is higher so my bills were about 1850. this is where i try to budget as best as i can um all the different random expenses so i did go a little bit over in groceries dining out was a little under so that was pretty good gas was a little bit over by like 15 dollars, and it probably will be more because i I think I will still need to get a tank of gas on Monday. So that will probably be closer to 350. <sighs> Shopping, yeah, I know. I really tried to stay, I really tried to budget zero dollars, but I ended up buying two shirts and that was $60. Beauty, I was way over. I don't remember why. So I budgeted 80 for my nails and then, oh, I got some makeup and oh and this hair styling thing so i did go over budget there which i don't love but i am working on it entertainment we did go to the movies so that's what that is travel i also thought was gonna be zero but i had to buy plane tickets because we're going to colorado in september and honestly not bad this is for two tickets for me and my husband to go to colorado because i used a lot of my chase points for that so I'm not upset about that, but I totally forgot that I did need to buy those tickets. Gifts was zero dollars. I'm under on the pets category, so that's pretty good. Health was zero. I think I just put 20 there. I, just, I have a health savings account or something, so I pretty much try to use that before I would use my money. That's what that money's for, and I do need to spend it by the end of the year, so I am trying to use that instead, but figured I would just budget 20 for that. Snacks, I am below my budget for snacks by like $20, so that was pretty good. I am a big snacker. Coffee was way over. I thought I was gonna be able to do better with coffee, but I was over by a lot. So we need to figure that out, but I'm a little nervous because next month I'm pretty sure is when pumpkin spice comes back, so we might have to keep that at like $75. Golf is lower right now, but again, we are going golfing tomorrow, so I do think that is going to be a little bit over. Home was over because I went shopping the other day and got some like Halloween stuff. Whoops. Miscellaneous was over. And then my car, car other, because I had car payment, gas, and then car other is repairs or... I don't know whatever normally i won't have anything in this category but i had to this time because this was my deductible for the damage that was done to my car so that was the money that i took out of my emergency fund so i feel like that also didn't help with like when you look at the overall top here budget wise and expenses like 
I don't know, it just seems a little off to me, but I think this plays a part in it because obviously spending $1,000 on your car is not something I do every month, but wedding again, I thought we had our wedding last month in June. So I thought I was done with wedding expenses, but no, because I had to buy thank you cards, stamps, our marriage certificate, and I think that's it. But I had to buy all those things. So that came to about $100. Amazon, I did very well on Amazon, only $17. Drinks was 55, so a little bit over. And then books, I stayed within my budget. I only spent $25 on books, so. Um, again, total expenses in those categories came to about 2,500, which is a little bit over than what I budget, budgeted overall. But again, it kind of works out where like when you spend less money in certain categories, spend more money in other categories so i do need to work on a few things obviously but this will definitely be lower next month because i won't have that car expense and then finally in my debt category i was able to put about 1950 towards my chase credit card which brought that down significantly and that was amazing and then i only put a hundred dollars towards my bank of america credit card because that one i'm just paying the minimum until my chase ones paid off and then i'll pay that one down so i do have to like normally i would just put everything towards the one but you do need to pay the minimum so pay the minimum and then eventually all of the money will go towards the one credit card so just over two thousand towards my debt this month which is amazing and then again down here is just where i input every single expense and then it just auto populates into this total up here. So that's pretty cool. And then this little graph here is just showing overall where your money kind of goes percentage wise. So top three things were credit card, house fund, and my car, obviously. So it does say my total expenses for the month were $7,230, which is crazy. I definitely wish it wasn't that much. But again, this accounts for literally everything as I try to do like a zero dollar budget. Like this is obviously including all of the debt that I have. So that kind of makes sense. All right, so now we can take a look at August. Again, this will carry over just simply because that's what it thinks that I have left, which seems a little, it seems a little complicated to me, but anyway. So this is income, I will get paid on the 9th and the 23rd. I'm gonna say that I make roughly 2,300 each paycheck because that's typically what I make. I have one more bonus check and that will be in October. So I do know ahead of time, like what I'll make from the TikTok, cre TikTok creator fund because you get paid out like for the month, any money that I made in July, I'll get paid out on August 15th. So I know that it's roughly $350. And then any extra miscellaneous, I'll just leave that blank for now because I'm not actually sure if I will make anything. I don't know if I'll make anything from clothes or Facebook Marketplace this month. So I'll probably just leave that at zero for now. All right, so starting with savings, again, I'll try to save 200 for my emergency fund, 200 for the house fund, and 100 in my Roth IRA. Those should all be pretty much automated because I have those, the money split up for my paycheck just go there immediately. And then I did fill these out already because these are pretty standard except I changed the subscription one. It's a little lower because I canceled four subscriptions last month and that brought that down from 106 to $81, which is pretty good. Um, and then my fitness membership will only be $10 because that is just Planet Fitness. I keep the car payment at what it actually is just because I liked for this number to reflect what my actual fixed expenses are, even though I do plan to pay more than the car payment. I just like to be able to see like, okay, my actual fixed expenses for bills are only like 1500 out of my total income and stuff. So I do like to see that. Then I'm going to go through these expenses here and kind of, because this was my first 
like July was my first month. I think it'll be easier for me to budget this because I'll have a better understanding of what I normally spend every month. So it looks like for groceries, maybe I'll put that at 300. Dining out, I had at 75, which looked good. Fuel, I'll put 350, even though I don't want to, but that probably is a little more realistic. Shopping, I'm gonna put that at zero. Beauty, I am gonna get my nails done. I typically get my nails done once a month. I do budget for that, and I'm sorry if that offends people that I get my nails done when I'm trying to pay off debt. But I'm gonna put 100 in beauty. Entertainment should be zero. Travel should be zero. Gifts, I'm gonna put zero. Pets, I'm gonna put probably, I'm gonna probably stick to 115. Health, I'm actually gonna put zero because I feel like that is a better judgment of what I actually will spend. Snacks, we'll put 25. Coffee, coffee, I'm gonna put 75, I think. I know, I'm sorry guys, but I really am anticipating pumpkin spice and I'm, I'm weak and weak when it comes to pumpkin spice. Golf, I'm gonna put 60, cause I think we'll, I'll probably try to go golfing again twice. Home, I'm gonna put zero because I don't wanna spend anything else on that. Miscellaneous, I'll put 40. And then car, other, zero. Wedding, zero. Probably after this month, I'll probably just take wedding out because I don't expect we'll spend anything else on the wedding. Amazon, I'll put 40. Hopefully, I don't spend that, but you never really know with Amazon, to be honest. Total budgeted expenses should be roughly 1180 which is way less than last month. So that's pretty good. We'll see how we do there. And then credit cards. So I only owe 700 on there, so I'll put 700 And then it looks like I should be able to put... 950 towards Bank of America. So that's exciting. Total 1650 towards debt. So again, if we take a look here at this available to budget, this gives me a good idea of like based on total projected income and what I've budgeted for myself, including all of these expenses. Um, I'm still in the green technically. So as long as I stick to this budget, I should be good and have money left over. So I feel very good about this. I'm still getting kind of used to using this tracker. I think that makes sense to me. I feel like this this like left to spend available to budget thing can be a little confusing, but basically as long as I, as long as you're tracking and keeping tabs on like what you're spending, what you want to budget yourself to spend, I feel like you're on the right track and you'll you'll figure it out but yeah i think after i do a couple months of this expenses and stuff it will make a little more sense and be a little more reflective of what my my budget really is so i'm excited to budget next month because we'll have one card paid off everything will be going in the right direction and then i also would show you guys this this tab here so this is the debt snowball tab and so you put in your different debts here and it shows you the projected like payoff date with the payments that you're making. So um, obviously Chase, I'll have paid off next month. Uh, this is how I'm kind of, this is how I keep saying like I'm projected to pay off my debt, my credit card debt by November because I'm using this, these numbers to kind of show how I'm paying this off. And then this last one is my car loan, which kind of blows, but as of right now, it looks like December 2026 if I make all of these payments towards my car. Yeah, that is my tracker. That is my budget tracker going through this month, last month. Yeah, staying on top of our finances, paying off debt, figuring it out. Um, if you guys have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. Yeah. I hope this was a fun monthly reset for you guys and we'll see you guys in the next video.